News Channel 5. On your side, starts now. I wanted to hug my son, but I, I just, I couldn't have put my arms, but he couldn't hug me back. Heartbreak. For the first time tonight, we're hearing from the parents of a student killed in the Chardon School shooting. Their pain, unimaginable. Their grief shared by the families of other victims. Good evening, I'm Lee Jordan. And I'm Danita Harris. Tomorrow, students and their parents will go back to Chardon High School. All of their lives change forever. This is a live look in Chardon tonight, as you see the red ribbon there donned all throughout the neighborhoods to show a sign of school spirit. Red and black are Chardon High School schools school colors memorials have popped up all over town to remember the three lives lost Danny Parmeter was the first fatality in Monday shooting at Chardon High School today his parents Bob and Dina are talking about the child they've lost a son they describe as outgoing and lovable they share how they learned of the tragedy at his school you never would think would happen to your own mm -hmm. own child mm -hmm. and you know and when it does strike, you're like, it's not it's real. It's not real. I, yeah. This just can't it be happening. It happens to that guy and that guy on TV. It doesn't, I don't, I don't know what this is. Not in Chardon. That's, we moved to get away from gunfire and stuff like that, you know. Or we wanted to be a nice community where everything was good and what yeah. happens. It doesn't matter where you go. It was very weird because I just had a, a sick feeling in my stomach. I had found out. Um, my sister called me. I was on my way home from work. And, you know, I got to uh, turn on the radio. And I just, and they said a shooting at Chardon. And it was just a weird, I don't know. I never felt it. So I didn't know what I was feeling. And I just had this weird feeling in my stomach. I guess that's like a mother, you know. And I just immediately tried to call and text him and anytime I would do that he always respond right away because he's he loves that kind of stuff computers and text that he knows and and he didn't text back he didn't call and that just you know made it worse he just was building on and everything was building and I was saying in my head this is I you know you know he's gonna call and he did it. And I, I couldn't get through and he didn't call back and he did call but it wasn't him. It was his phone and it was the, I don't know, the rescue people and all, you know, and they just told me, you have to go to Metro right now. You know, they're life lighting Danny and I, I didn't really process it. I wanted to know. I said, let me, I just said, let me talk to Danny. Let me talk to Danny. This is his mom, you know, he needs his mom. And he wouldn't and he just, he didn't say anything, and it was weird. I, I just, it was too weird, and I couldn't. You have to go to Metro right now. You have to go there. He's being lifeline. And repeat that to me. You know, repeat that to me. We, we couldn't get to him. We couldn't get there. We just wanted to get there and be with him, and we just couldn't. And it just took too long, and I just wanted to see him. And we finding get that there. out is just the worst. Your life is over. This morning, Bob and Dina told the Today Show that Danny was looking forward to picking up his paycheck from his first job. And we'll hear more from Bob and Dina Parmeter at 530. They talk about how special and likable Danny was. Daniel will be laid to rest on Saturday. On Friday, people can pay their respects from noon until 8 p.m. at Montreal Funeral Home on Curtis Boulevard in Eastlake. The funeral will be Saturday morning at St. Mary's of Chardon. His body will be buried at All Souls Cemetery. Terry. And we're also hearing today from the families of the other two students who died. That's right. They released statements thanking the community for its support. The family of Demetrius Hewlin said Demetrius was a happy young man who loved life, his family, and friends. And the family of Russell King Jr. said, we ask that Russell be remembered for who he was, a strong boy with a big heart. He will be missed by many. Funeral arrangements have not been announced for either boy yet. Two other students were hospitalized. One remains in serious condition, but the family of Nick Walzak says he is improving. The other, Joy Rickers, is home recovering. We're going to move on now from a tragedy like the one in Chardon and just say that it is never easy. Today, teachers in the Chardon School District took the first step 
returning to school. But they didn't do it alone. News Channel 5's Paul Kiska is live outside Chardon High School with a look at how the community came out to support the teachers today. Well, Lee, we saw teachers and staff members of Chardon schools uh, going back to work today, going back to do their jobs 48 hours after tragedy struck at their school on Monday morning. They walked into school in a driving rainstorm. They walked in quietly. They left quietly through, throughout the day, but they did not walk back into the building alone. There were police officers here and other signs of support. Comforting hugs between friends and co-workers who must have a special bond now as they head back into Chardon High School. I heard the gunshot and then people just started running and screaming past our door. With the painful images still sharp, Chardon High School student Casey Griffiths, her brother and mom, greeted teachers and staff with signs of support. These teachers helped save tons of people, so it's the least we can do. We really just wanted to support the teachers, and the best way you can support them, 100 plus, is signs and just standing out. And if they want to talk, if they want to hug. Then. You guys were my role models when I was in high school, and this is only going to amplify that for all the younger students. It really shows how much that, how much you care about your students. And just incredibly sad. For the families that lost their children, because I can't even imagine what that's like. Casey's mom knows taking her daughter back to school must happen, but it won't be easy. Um, tomorrow, the, the fact that we can come back with our kids it, um, is going to be very comforting, and it's going to help us um, just to ease back into it. So I think I, I think it's a wonderful plan, um, and hopefully by Friday. We'll be ready. I mean, I know some people say getting back into the routine is what you need to do. Um, so that's what we're going to try and do. And the superintendent of Chardon Schools asking all parents to go back to schools in Chardon tomorrow with their children, escort them right into the school, hang out with them tomorrow, help them make that difficult transition. And then on Friday, the students will go back to school. Live from Chardon tonight, Paul Kiska, News Channel 5. And, and the hope is certainly that they will all get some comfort from being with each other again. With each other and with grief counselors, and some students say they plan on taking advantage of, of those counselors and, and talk to them about everything that went down here. Okay, okay. Paul Kiska and Chardon. Thank you, Paul. There has been an outpouring of support throughout the community, Northeast Ohio, and from across the nation. A community who never thought something like this could happen have rallied together. News Channel 5's Michael Baldwin talked with the mayor of Chardon today. Michael? Hey, hey, Danita. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Philip King, no relation to shooting victim Russell King Jr., says this city will eventually get past this, and he says they will do it as one big extended family. The small city of Chardon is full of pride and support, and the memories of this week's tragic events will live on forever. Yes, the community last night began the healing process, the service at the Catholic Church, the community coming together was just humbling and overwhelming. For many, the gravity of what happened is just starting to set in. I ran into somebody at the grocery store, she just looked at me and she said, it's so sad. That's all you have to say. Marcy's been cutting hair for years. She says whether you have a child at the high school or not, this really hits home. Because it's a small town, everybody has some type of connection in one way or another. Square City Tattoo had five people come in yesterday and two more scheduled today, all looking to show their support in a more permanent fashion. I know a lot of people are just getting the dates, but we kind of incorporate the Chardon colors with it. Some people are asking for just images to go with it, you know, always remember, never forget, stuff like that. It's hard to talk about. I mean, it's hard for me to talk about and everybody here, but you can just see it on, on the faces of everybody in town. We'll band together, we'll support the families of, of the victims, and we'll move on and, and we'll be better for it. All right, coming up tonight at 6, we'll take you to a popular coffee shop to hear what people are saying about this tragic event when reporters are not around. Well, I've been short. I'm Michael Baldwin, News Channel 5. 
Okay, Michael, thank you. Prosecutors have until tomorrow to file official charges against T.J. Lane, the suspected gunman in the shootings. They're expected to ask that he be tried as an adult. We're going to hear later from two girls who say they were trying to reach out to T.J. Lane months before this happened. 911 calls answered by Geauga County operators give a glimpse into what it was like to be inside Chardon High on Monday. News Channel 5's Alicia Ciccoloni listened to emergency calls for help as the 17-year-old gunman opened fire on his classmates. It was like any other Monday at Chardon High School until just before 8 a.m. when the first 911 phone call came from inside the cafeteria. Sheer terror spread through the entire school. 911, where is your emergency? We just had, we just had a shooting at our school. We need to get out of here. Oh my okay. God, okay, ma'am, we got a school shooting. Ma'am, what school? Chardon High School. Chardon High School? Yes, ma'am. All right. Can you go get the administration? Okay. Everyone's running away, so. Where's the I don't student know. with the gun? I don't know. He was in the cafeteria and everyone just started running. Do you see the shooter? No, I didn't. I just saw, like, the gun. Okay, did you see the gun? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now listen to me. Listen to me. Where are you at? I'm outside the school right now. We hear the, the sirens. That was right by the shoot when he pulled the gun. Those students made it out of the school, but this call came from a group that went into a room to hide. Are you locked in the room that you're in? Uh, no. Can you lock the door? Can anybody lock the door? No, we cannot lock the door. We just need somebody down here. We are. We're getting them there. And police, SWAT, and other Geauga County authorities were there within minutes of the calls. The alleged shooter arrested not long after that. But the terror still remains. Alicia Ciccoloni, News Channel 5. The shooting at Chardon High School is something none of us will forget. Tonight, a look at the images from the last few days that need no words. of the Chardon school shooting, the deadly shooting has rocked the community and the nation, much like the school shooting at Columbine High School in 1999. Today, the father of one of the girls killed at Columbine is joining us live from Denver to talk about his experience, what it was like days and even years after, and the incredible way his daughter's legacy lives on. Daryl Scott, we thank you for joining us this afternoon. And, you know, it's very rare to talk with someone who has gone through something like the families of the victims in this tragedy. What would you say to them tonight? Well, honestly, they don't need to hear from me. Those victims' families need their friends and family around them. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted a stranger talking to me right after Rachel died. I needed my f family. But uh, the, the pain will be there for a, a period of time. And then there will be a healing process, and uh, it's months afterwards that a lot of times I do talk to victims' families, and I just encourage them to celebrate the memories of their children. We've been able to celebrate Rachel's memory with 17 million people over the last few years. And uh, just to celebrate their memories, to remember the good times, uh, suddenly pictures that were lying around the house will suddenly become priceless possessions. Those things will all come together, and my heart really goes out to the parents, especially who lost children. Daryl, no one will ever forget this tragedy, but if you could share with us just a little bit of uh, when you experienced this with Columbine, and just take us what happened and what's going on that we could understand what the parents are dealing with and be more sensitive to them at this time. Well, I was in a shopping mall when my wife called on my cell phone and said there had been a shooting, and I rushed over to the school, and uh, you just want to live in denial that your child could be taken from you. And I had two children at school that day. My son Craig 
was also there in the library. Two of his friends were killed beside him. And he lay there covered in their blood, looking down the barrel of two guns, knowing that he was going to die. And he was, he was spared, but my daughter Rachel was the first one to be shot and killed. And uh, for days we were just in shock. And there were a lot of well-meaning people who came from all around the country to try to console us, but we really needed just to be with our friends and family. And uh, I think the best thing that anyone can do is just be available. Uh, it's not a time to push ourselves on other people, on people that are wounded and hurting, but it's a time to be there if, if we're needed. And of course, to offer up our our heartfelt sympathy and, and our prayers to the, to the victims' families and to the whole community, because you're, the whole community there is going through some real pain right now, and my heart goes out to all of them. Yes, it has affected just so many people what has happened here this week. Well, you have definitely carried on Rachel's legacy in such a powerful way and has touched students all across Northeast Ohio. We know it's been here several times. Tell us a little bit about Rachel's Challenge. Well, it's a program, it's the largest school assembly program in America today. We reach around 3 million students across the United States and also in Canada and several other countries. We have 50 presenters and we simply go in and tell a story in an assembly and then we do a training with about 100 to 200 uh, students, create a, a service club in that school, do an evening event with parents and we have seen sc seven school shootings prevented that we know of in the last few years and over the last two years we've seen over 500 uh, suicides prevented as a result of her story. So her legacy lives on. Well, we thank you so much for the wonderful work that you're continuing to do in your daughter's name. And Daryl Scott, we thank you for joining us today at Live 5. We appreciate it. Well, there were more school threats and increased security presence today in the aftermath of the Chardon school shooting. And police even made some arrests. Lake County authorities arrested a 20-year-old Painesville man. Investigators say Anthony Harris posted a threat on Facebook that there will be more dead kids from Chardon. He is in jail on a charge of inducing panic. Summit County authorities arrested a 14-year-old student at the LEAP program in Green. They say he made death threats against another student on Facebook. He was previously arrested for bringing a gun to school. North Royalton High School went into lockdown today. A student came forward and told administrators about a possible weapon at the school. It immediately went into lockdown, but that was soon lifted when no threat was found. We take, I think, great pride um, in having uh, students that are willing to come forward and to have the support personnel that are there and can react quickly. And so it is not rare for our students to come forward and share things. Also today, Cleveland Central Catholic went into lockdown over a bomb threat. No threat was found there. And Litchfield Middle School in Akron bumped up security after a threatening Facebook post. No students were injured in any of these incidents. The news continues right now on News Channel 5 on your side. We're taking live pictures of Chardon right now. Storm clouds over the Chardon community parted this afternoon, replaced by bright sunshine. A symbolic reminder to the close-knit small Geauga County community that the darkness of pain and grief will eventually be replaced by warmth and healing. Our coverage of the tragedy in Chardon continues now at 530. The family of one of the victims talked with the news media about their son. The parents of Danny Parmeter talked about their terrible loss, but also also, how Danny will be remembered. Danny was a, a very funny, outgoing, lo lovable kid. And I, I'm really just not saying that because I'm his father. Mm -hmm. um, but he really was. And, and he did touch a lot of people's hearts. Um, he didn't have a mean bone in his, in his body. He, mm -hmm. he really didn't. And he never yelled back at anybody or anything like that. He was very respectful. Mm -hmm. um, now he was a... He, I, I, just very mellow, <laughs> but yeah. funny, and the jokester, and it just, nothing bothered him. He just had fun with his friends and his family, his cousins. It's just, he was just the best son. He made fun of us because he was always taller than us <laughs> doing this, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I laughed, you know? And this is a great boy, a good boy, a good yeah, boy. <laughs> Nobody, you couldn't meet him or know him and not like him. I don't know how you could not like him. You couldn't find a way. We love him. We love him. Even though, Rod, 
Oh, no. What you're looking at is some home video that the Parmeter shared with us of Danny, typical teenager with his headphones on, listening to his favorite music. And Danita, how these three kids lost their lives is something we'll all continue to deal with. What, but what their parents want us to know is how wonderful these young people were. And the struggle to return to normal in Chardon, it started today. Kristen Severance with our partners at the Ohio News Network was there today as the staff returned to the high school for the first time since Monday. It's the first day back for teachers and grief counselors are inside to try to help staff members deal with such an emotional day. I heard one staff member walking out of the building saying it was so hard to be there to walk in and to see the books and papers still on the floor from the shooting Monday. You can see a vigil made here at the high school sign. And as teachers arrived to the building this morning, they were greeted by a family of three, the Griffiths family. They made homemade signs one said one heartbeat. The other said thank you. Courtney Griffiths is a student here. She was there when the shootings happened on Monday. Her brother graduated last year. Her mother said they had to be here to show their support for the teachers. Because they did much more for us than we're doing here today for them. They took care of our kids as much as they could. So this is a, a very small thing that we can do to show that we really appreciate them. Tomorrow, students and their parents are invited to come to the school together to walk the halls and become more comfortable. Friday, they plan to start school, normal time, students only. On scene in Chardon, Kristen Severance, The Ohio News Network. And we will be there as students and teachers return to the high school tomorrow. We're committed to bringing you all the latest developments from Chardon. We'll also bring you new information expected tomorrow on the suspected gunman T.J. Lane. Prosecutors have until tomorrow to file official charges. And Newsnet5.com is the place to find all the stories, pictures, and videos from this tragedy over the last few days.